I do a lot of Apple TV content on the channel and like movie video streaming bitrate face-offs. And when I do all of that, I use my latest model 2022 Apple TV 4K with the, the developer debug information to pull up an overlay, shows us the bit rates, the audio codecs, like all of the specific details about the stream. Now in the past, in order to be able to access this menu, you had to kind of jump through some hoops. You had to be registered as like an Apple developer. You had to have a Mac. You had to have their Xcode software development environment downloaded and installed and authenticated with the right versions and all of that. And then you'd have to open up Xcode. You go to the special devices section and your Xcode installation would find your Apple TV. They would talk and agree and Xcode could unlock the Apple TV for developer debug mode access, turning on a secret menu and allowing us to turn on the HUD. Quite a few steps and a little bit of complexity there, but it appears in the latest Apple TV OS betas now that if you're just running the beta software, hey, you have access to the developer menu. I have not needed to use my Mac to unlock the developer menu option in the last couple of beta updates. I, I pretty much run beta updates on almost all of my Apple gear, except my Mac specifically, always on the Apple TV, always on my phone, my iPads and all of that. So I figured, hey, why not show this off? If you wanna check out streaming quality bit rates and all of that in your own system, in your own space, it's really easy to do now with an Apple TV. So step one, of course, you gotta be running the right version of the software to do it. And if I go down here to system, settings or settings system rather and go into software updates i see an option on the bottom that says get beta updates super simple turn it on you turn it on update your software right to whatever latest now beta version of the software that the device will pull down and i really like how they do this with the apple tv if you want to run beta versions of like ios or ipad os and some of the other Apple platforms, you have to, you actually do have to jump through other hoops. You got to go register on web pages and download certain profiles. None of that on Apple TV, just turn it on and download. And we can see here, my tvOS version is 16.4 as of the time of recording this video, which is I think a point one or a little more ahead of like the general release that everybody else is running on their Apple TVs. Pretty straightforward then, once you've got the latest beta, you should have the developer menu. Go into the developer menu. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here and quite honestly, I have not messed with any of it except for the playback HUD. We go down, playback HUD, currently off, turn it on. There you go. Now, whenever you play any type of requisite content from any apps basically on the Apple TV platform that have the right hooks and have the enablement kind of of this background HUD option, you will see the overlay. You'll have the, the yellow text and all of the details and all of that up in the corner of your screen. And there we are. I just started playing Top Gun Maverick in iTunes and we see this whole big like kind of dump and download of information up in the left-hand corner in the yellow text. So let's run through it really quick and see what we actually have there to explore. The first line talks about video format. It basically tells us the video codec that the video we're watching was encoded with as well as a video range, meaning is it SDR, standard dynamic range? Is it HDR? Is it Dolby Vision? So we can see here for Top Gun Maverick, it just says basically Dolby Vision 5, which is the Profile 5 version of Dolby Vision. QDH1 video codec, that is a pretty common video codec for video served to a plethora of apps on the Apple TV system. Second line, audio format description, very similar to video, but for audio. We see codec, we see channels, and we see sample rate. So we're looking here at QEC3. That's basically like Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Matte. 16 channels informs us that this is Dolby Atmos. If we had two channels, it would say two if it was stereo, you know, or somewhere in between for just a regular kind of multi-channel track. When you see 16, though, you know you're getting Dolby Atmos. And then the sample rate, 48,000. Third line, display resolution. Now this is the information that the Apple TV is basically negotiated with your display. So we see 3840 by 2160. I'm connected here to an 83 inch LG G2. It is a native regular 4K display. Currently our refresh rate 23.98. 
a lot of movie content, video content, renders itself or plays back natively, assuming of course you have the match frame rate feature of the Apple TV turned on, it will play back at its native frame rate of just that little tick less than 24 frames per second, 24 hertz. And we see another indication of the video range, which is telling us it says Dolby Vision again, but that doesn't mean the content is in Dolby Vision. I think that ultimately this time it means that the TV agrees and the TV is running essentially in a Dolby Vision mode or Dolby Vision capable. The next line talks about video sizes and there's two different resolutions usually represented on this line. The first one is what they call the display size. The second one is what they call the natural size. Now sometimes these don't necessarily always line up. However, in this case, what we're getting is 3840 by 2024. We're not getting 3840 by 2160. That's because Top Gun is in essentially a 185 to one aspect ratio box, but it has IMAX enhanced stuff in it. This movie actually changes aspect ratio itself. So Apple from their servers for this movie is streaming us a video window basically of 3840 by 2024. The television is setting that inside its field of 3840 by 2160 and it just displays the remainder of the space above and below is black bars. So you may see different numbers in here. As we've talked about in some of the face-offs, we, we may have a scope movie, an ultra wide screen movie that still shows up as a natural size of 3840 by 2160, meaning they're actually streaming the full field frame, including the black pixels. Sometimes we may see a resolution reported less than that. In this case, for example, again, where they're streaming us less than the full field of the pixels of the TV and the TV just fills in the rest with black space. I think it's always interesting when looking at the face-offs, looking at the video content to, to see how they manage aspect ratios and the actual resolution in this way. Next one is a measure of network bandwidth. I am paused, nothing is being consumed at the moment, but you'll see that number fluctuate as the Apple TV is communicating you know, on your network, exchanging data for traffic and all of that. Now the next two lines after that, getting almost to the bottom here, have a lot to do with the actual video bit rates and the audio bit rates of the, of the movie, content, TV show, whatever it is we're watching. And this is what I really base the face-offs on. So on the one line, we have an average video bit rate number indicated. We have an audio bit rate indicated. So this one says 770 kilobit. As we know from the face-offs, about the best that we can expect for Dolby Atmos streaming from any of these providers nowadays is about 770 kilobit. And then the next line is the one that I really usually base my face-off comparisons on. It tells us an indicated bit rate peak and average. So that's the, uh, like the metadata uh, of the content being streamed telling the Apple TV some details about what it contains. Peak means what's the highest bit rate that was used throughout the entire piece of content during its video encoding process. Average is of course then the average of those bit rates. Some scenes depending on their lighting, their complexity and all of that may have more bit rate applied to them to have a nicer looking result during the compression stages than others. So, and of course we always wanna see peaks well up into the 30s and hopefully we wanna see averages well into the mid 20s. And then the last line mentions stalls. There's a total number and a current variant. Honestly, I'm not sure exactly what that one represents, if that has something to do with the integrity of the stream, perhaps errors in the stream. I would presume, or, or I guess just assume, hopefully you wanna see zero stalls, you know, zero problems with the actual streaming behavior of whatever it is you're watching. So there you go. That's how you can get access to the Apple TV playback HUD and all of this additional technical information about the content that you're watching and hopefully a pretty useful summary of how to make sense of all of that technical text that you will see up in the corner. Um, if you know any more information about this, if there's something, uh, some other detail in there that I overlooked or maybe didn't explain properly enough, sound off in the comments. Uh, let me know, let's chat about it. And especially as well, if you know how to get similar information on other platforms, Android TV or Google TV, Roku, Fire TV, or LG, or any of these TV platforms, if you know the secret, the secret uh, remote control command sequence, whatever it is, to get similar metrics, I would love to be able to do it on some other platforms to be able to compare those to Apple TV. So if you're aware of that, send it to me, post it in the comments, 
etc. I'm still going to keep doing the face-offs despite the fact that now most everybody can fairly easily access the playback HUD info. I hope that everybody finds them useful and entertaining. And if you do, wouldn't you know, there's some ways to support the channel. There's super thanks. There's the ability to use my Amazon affiliate links. There's the ability to join the channel with a membership or just straight up make some donations. Check that all out in the description down below. And otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, share the video, and leave those comments and let's chat. Thanks so much for watching. Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.